Listening to music or podcasts at your desk or while you work has become pretty commonplace in most offices these days. But typically, you know, it's a AirPods Pro, wireless headphones, or maybe a closed back with pretty simple portable setup that you're using. Now, I'm always listening to music at my desk with headphones or IEMs, but recently I spent a week with some headphones that are maybe the ultimate workplace accessory. The $35,000 Warwick Aperio. Was my life forever changed by this experience? Did I actually find the ultimate workplace accessory? And in all seriousness, does Aperio offer sound and performance uh, to command that $35,000 and up price tag, depending on the color? And who is this headphone for? Let's take a closer look. Aperio is a complete headphone system that includes the headphones themselves and a purpose design DAC amp streamer uh, that comes with the headphones. So that you know $35,000 price tag is that full package. Now you can connect any number of DACs or sources to the Aperio amp, but the amp itself and the Aperio headphones are only designed for each other. Uh, so you're not gonna be able to get the Aperio headphones and try them out on a different amp without some engineering happening. And you won't be able to listen to any other headphones on the Aperio amp. Goal here is to provide a complete flagship experience without the complications that usually go into building a top of the line headphone system. Whole system comes together in a gigantic flight case, which is definitely gonna keep it safe. And inside the case, you'll find the headphones themselves, the you know, DAC amp streamer unit, and some cables for different uses, USB, ethernet, the power cable, obviously, and the cables inside are really high quality. Headphones themselves are really nicely built up. Lots of leather, you know, cushiony ear pads and headband, uh, you know, there's some aluminum and some high quality plastic in the construction. Uh, generally, again, these are very comfortable, very well designed, good extension for larger heads. They're a little bit clampy at first, uh, but didn't feel like that was an issue with longer listening sessions. I didn't find them at fatiguing at all to wear over time. Very well balanced in that, you know, providing good structure over the ear and holding position without getting uncomfortable. The DAC amp likewise, it has a really solid build, great construction and materials, elements like the jacks and the knobs, all very well installed. It's clear they went with very high end components for each element of this. Uh, there's a stepped attenuator that controls the volume as well as another similar knob for input selection. Those all feel good. Uh, the switches for power, uh, output levels and that sort of thing also feel great. Uh, this is definitely a unit that's designed to feel like an ultra premium, top of the line piece of equipment. While, as I mentioned, you're not able to use the Aperio headphones uh, with anything other than the Aperio amp, there are a good number of connection options on here uh, from you know analog input, analog output for a preamp if you've got this integrated into a larger system, SPDIF, AES, USB, and ethernet input. Uh, the device can function as a streamer and probably does some of its best work if you set it up as a Rune endpoint on your network. In terms of the overall build and design, now it's hard to say, you know, what's a 5,000 versus 10,000 versus $50,000 build quality in a headphone. You know, if you've been to a show and held a Sennheiser HE1, it's a well-built headphone. It uh, doesn't feel like the materials and construction are a big consideration in that price point, obviously. Uh, same with the Perio here. Uh, feels great compared to any number of $5,000 headphones. Uh, the system itself, again, it's right at home alongside $10,000, $15,000 headphone and two channel components. So it's all really solid here. And the question here is not gonna be, I guess, you know, 
Are these headphones more comfortable than a Focal Utopia? But instead, is this system you know, taken as one unit uh, provide a sound quality and performance that earns that price tag? One of the problems when you've been around a few can jams, you know, work for a headphone store that has brands ship us really expensive stuff to demo from time to time is it's a little bit harder to, you know, blow your mind when you've heard a few 30, 40, 50,000 dollar systems. There's not that same wow factor and amazement from the first time you heard it. So when I sat down with Apurio, I didn't take the tact of let me find my coolest reference tracks to you know, really blow my mind with the imaging or the sound stage. I, instead, I kind of took it as a let's sit down and have a really thoughtful uh, evaluation of this and spend some serious, dedicated listening time to understand what makes a Perio great. So the first album I listened to all the way through was Out of the Blue by Electric Light Orchestra. And what I was struck by was, you know, just the simple stuff, the fundamentals, uh, very natural timbre, which is somewhat unusual in electrostatics, even at the very high end, uh, but you still had all those key, very fast, very resolving, very well extended treble with a Purio. And so kind of my first note on that was that combination of our, here's, we're doing all the things that electrostatics do really well, but there's also a, just this natural lifelike feeling that's not exaggerated in the way that I find electrostatics often are. But that big wow moment came with the Blade Runner 2049 soundtrack. And there were two things that hit me at once. The first one was the sense of vertical imaging that I got and this immenseness that didn't just feel wide, it did feel very wide uh, or even deep, but it provided some of the best sense of height that I've ever heard in a headphone. If you've seen the movie or seen the trailers, these or the original even, you know, these sort of dystopian cyberpunk skyscrapers uh, out in the distance, that sort of feeling that I got that sense of height from the headphone. And obviously I've heard that in before, but never to this extent or with the just vividness that Aperio presented that height in the soundstage. The other piece of it was the bass. Now, a lot of electrostatic headphones have tried to give bass. Some do it really well. Uh, if you're in our review of the Blue Hawaii uh, from Headamp, we mentioned the Stacks, uh, a couple other ones that really did present a uh, you know, powerful, impactful bass. Aperio's on a whole different level with this. Talking, you know, really tight, clean impact. Uh, just a subtle sense of warmth coming up and this deep, physical head shaking rumble that you get from the low end of the sub bass here. And through that whole extension of the bass, you know, going down from the lower mids into those you know, 20 Hertz sub regions, there's just, you can pick out every detail in the instrument, you know, pick out the textures there while it's just shaking your head, uh, which was, really a pretty incredible aspect of a period that I wasn't expecting when it hit me. And in all that time, it did really strike me how much of a great all around headphone a Perio was. Whatever I threw at it, you know, rock, jazz, pop, funk, classical, traditional classical, orchestral music, solo piano, film scores, a Perio had something really strong to offer each of those genres. You know, whether it's that deep sub bass and dance music or just that natural in the studio feeling with rock and jazz, fantastic vocal presentation with pop that again puts you in the room you know, with the singers, a really well-balanced soundstage that knows when to be huge and when to be a little bit more intimate. 
Uh, and again, just all that other fast resolving technical elements that you're expecting from an electrostatic headphone. I will say at the very start of my time listening with the Purio, I was a little concerned that it wasn't giving me the wow that I expected. And after listening some more, I realized this isn't like some kind of audiophile toy for you to break out as a party trick, you know, oh, like check out this imaging. Now, obviously people will have their minds blown if they haven't heard something on this level before, uh, but you can do that. You can do hi-fi party tricks uh, with much less expensive headphones. There's an understated excellence in a Purio that I think is really for the music lover. There's a quote that pops up in audiophile circles. I think it goes back to Alan Parsons, who said, audiophiles don't use their gear to listen to your music. They use your music to listen to their gear. And I think a Purio breaks that. Uh, with a Purio, I never felt like I wanted to, you know, listen to a gimmick or, or hear something. I just wanted to hear the music. Uh, made me want to go back and listen to an album again, uh, find a new detail hidden in that, really focus on the listening to hear everything. Obviously, this is not the headphone you're going to bring into your workplace, beside the fact that it's open back and huge and expensive. If you did do this, ah, if it wasn't my part of my job to listen to headphones, I probably would just get fired because all I'd want to do is sit and listen to the music and not do any work. So it's definitely not for people who want to bring this to work. I think this is really for the music lover who doesn't want to spend hours and days demoing a hundred different systems on DACs and amps and everything else. You want just unfettered excellence in one package. That's a period. Thanks for watching. Check out the Warwick Apirio at bloomaudio.com. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll be back soon with more high fidelity audio content.